real wages have experienced their most significant period of decline since records began. Inflation has now outstripped wage growth for the last 11 quarters in a row. And over the last three years, the buying power of your wages has dropped significantly, the equivalent of an average family being around $7,000 a year now worse off. And over the last six years, food prices are up 25% and rents are up $175. And with interest rates rising rapidly, with repayments on a $500,000 mortgage fixed just two years ago, they're now up $700 a fortnight. And I just think life shouldn't be that tough here in New Zealand. And if we just take monetary policy, it's fair to say that the Reserve Bank, I think, has given this country tremendous whiplash. Because between printing tens of billions of dollars, artificially cheap lending for commercial banks, and taking an axe to the official cash rate, New Zealand had the fifth largest monetary response in the world during COVID. New Zealand was flooded with money, and so asset prices exploded and inflation soared. And in the case of food prices, which are rising at their fastest rate for over 30 years, we saw the rather absurd situation of $500 million of kiwi fruit being lost last year, even while kiwi left supermarkets hungry and frustrated, and we had 50,000 more people on job seeker benefit. The rural economy has been totally strangled by red tape. And incredibly, government spending this year will be $20 billion higher than in either 2020 or 2021. And inflation is just driving the tax take ever upwards. Higher inflation, record interest rates, and a looming recession are the result. And the country recently recorded its largest current account deficit on record at almost 9% of GDP. And that means as a nation, we're spending far more than we actually earn. And we're now world beaters at it. You know, we have the largest current account deficit in the OECD. And now credit agencies have started to warn of a ratings downgrade if we don't start to pay our way in the world, meaning even higher interest rates on our debt. And just to give it in perspective, our debt has ballooned from $5 billion up to $80 billion, and it's heading towards $90 billion by the end of next year. Think about that. Interest bill on $90 billion, 5 to $7 billion, which would fund the police department and all our justice our department activities as well. So National has a plan to kickstart New Zealand's economic engine. We're going to provide income tax relief because hard work should be something to encourage, not something to tax. We're going to grow the skills to create the workforce that we need, fixing our broken immigration system and getting the education system back to basics. We're going to build infrastructure, delivering the projects that Kiwis need to go to work and businesses need to get their products to market. And we're going to encourage technology and innovation to create higher value Kiwi products and services that we can sell all around the world. We're going to require schools to teach an hour of reading, an hour of writing, and an hour of maths in primary and intermediate so that kids arrive at high school ready for extension, ready to go. Where our rural economy historically has driven the economy out of tough times, farmers and growers, I can tell you, have been under huge pressure. Open hostility from ministers has resulted in a range of unworkable regulations, layering on costs, making new investment impossible. And that's why I announced our commitment to achieving a free trade agreement with India. Not because it will be easy, but because the lifeblood of our economy is trade, and breaking open into those big, large new markets should be a major priority for our government. I will do my job and break down the barriers and unleash opportunities for Kiwis who want to go out and beat the world, but I expect you to do your job and harness all of that potential that New Zealand has to offer too. And for the last six years, I think taxpayers have been completely abused by this government. It is spending a billion dollars each and every week more than when it came into office. And the only thing to show for it is a massive increase in both our debt levels and the tax take. Net government debt has increased, as I said, from $5 billion to $80 billion in just a few short years. The IRD is now collecting $100 million more in tax every single day compared to just five years ago. That's $17,500 more tax on average for every Kiwi household this year. Because despite spending a billion dollars more every week, there is so very, very little to show for it. Our education standards have slipped, with young Kiwis falling well outside the top 10 countries in the world for English, maths and science. Our healthcare system is in a rolling crisis with the record workforce shortages and major blowouts in emergency department wait times, specialist wait times and immunisation rates. 
Crime has completely soared, with violent offending now up 33%. Retail crime, like the thefts and robberies plaguing communities all across this country, is now up over 40% in just the last two years. National will make much more information available to taxpayers on how their money is being spent. Each year, the IRD will produce a taxpayer receipt, received by every single taxpayer when their tax returns are finalised. And it will break down how much money they've paid and received in the last year, including any working for family tax credits or other benefit payments. And it will also break down where their taxes have been spent, including on education and health and on welfare payments. It is your money and you deserve to know exactly what it is being spent on.